What possesses people to paint or compose or write? In many ways that happens. Not infinite ways. Maybe it boils down to a big dozen, like the Zodiac. These paintings are about the seeds of being an artist. When you start using what's around you to try to make sense of yourself. They're organized in time, from bottom to top, earlier to later. An individual's creative evolution from inklings to understandings, like an egg, pupa, larva, imago, as analogs to how you understand your own work at different times. Generally, there are two parallel or contrasting figures, differing origins and different outcomes, different methods of progress and praxis. The premise of this painting, no particular title, it's body of work number eight, it's a painting made of just ten decisions. Take as premise that there are two fiction writers, contemporaries, or nearly so, probably young. And this one has a story in him. A story that deals with things that are so universal, say, a love story, that it's practically myth. Especially if you think of of myth as a strongly recurring signal that keeps happening all the time. Myths are, are reformed according to uh, the needs of each age and deployed to shape the present and, and the future. And here's the story. This vertical represents the story. It's the central thing in the field, in this field of ten decisions. It says, this is just a story. But it contains truth. It could happen to anyone. Maybe it's happened to you. Or maybe it will. It gets published, it becomes famous, he's celebrated for a while. More importantly, the story becomes beloved. And this, this horizontal drags some of this wet paint, wet into wet paint over here. This is a story's effect going out into the world. This author becomes all flowered up. Beloved, the way the story is beloved. Everybody who reads the story and takes it to heart is imprinted with it. Imprinted like you would be with a hit song that hits you at the right age and you're never going to lose your affection for that song. Nothing will make you lose affection for it. Not time, not even getting wised up. Whether the artist repeats the trick or is ever heard from again, is irrelevant. The work is imprinted. And here the artist stays. This author has complex feelings about the story. These feelings obsess her. She loves the story, probably. Just as likely, she sees it as something that challenges her own creative impulse. She feels that something in the story has established a change in the way this old story can be told today. After all, Every generation acts like they have discovered love and death. And they're largely correct in this assumption. Nobody before them has experienced love and death quite this way. She might have thought that um, this is a story that has changed the game. It has moved the goalposts of art. Everything that comes after this is going to have to take this story into account. You can't act as if it never had happened. You can go in the direction of that story, or you can oppose it, but you can't ignore it. You can't pretend that it never happened. But still. Maybe this one feels that uh, this, this story isn't deep enough. It contains contradictions. Or maybe it doesn't contain contradictions enough. It could be more story. It needs to be fleshed out with psychological nuance. Or it could be more true. Or it could be more book. So she writes that story. Taking the elements that move and obsess her and enlarges them through her own sensibility. This horizontal is hers. And it has a different signal from the other story. This new story is closer to a more embodied work of art. It doesn't sell very well. It's a heavy read. But it becomes anthologized and studied and taught as an exemplary work. It enters the academic culture. And this is her, nicely enmeshed in academic fame. Maybe 
proud, of course, but maybe a little doubtful that perhaps this was the only art that she really had in her, that this creative renovation job she did was maybe her real shot at her creative life. Or maybe it was that this was actually the art that she was intended to involve into, the art and the self. This artist ends up carrying a big sack of love. This one ends up carrying a sack of respectful scrutiny. And just like those characters in myth who die on Earth but are transformed into constellations, this one has love, this one has scrutiny, they both get what they want, and that's a reasonably happy ending, don't you think? These paintings take those individual archetypes of creativity into the world where the production of art any art is part of a social ecosystem, a continuum that involves uh, every sector of society from raw materials to theory and back again. Well, the first audience that artists pitch to is other artists. They're the ones who know how the sausage is made. They're the ones who understand art at a um, uh, engineering level. As a viewer, you want to feel you're in on whatever problems the artist is working on. The recurrence of cycles, and cycles within cycles, of style and fashion and signification and culture. The marginal becomes the mainstream. The end of a style presents itself as the opposite of the beginning. So this is about those, those cycles, especially as they relate to uh, styles of art. You know when a style or a work becomes not just popular but inevitable. It's when you get what the thing is about without having read the book, seen the movie, heard the music. The past is unpredictable. Nothing ages faster than the future. This is a study of ways a biographer or historian would look at an artist as the private individual with the inner life, as the public figure with that outer life, as the figure in art history, and as the person in art myth. This is an art dealer. This is a buyer putting his money on the table. And uh, this is the stable of artists. This is kind of a... Um, a, um, let me see, a bit of a nut, but with an academic reputation signified by the footnote. An intellectual, a young bad boy, an aging bad boy, a new age mystic. An academic surrealist with, uh, or a surrealist with an academic reputation, which is signified by the footnote. These paintings are concerned with how people experience the creative instinct differently. It's creativity through method, structure, objectivity. Art as an escape from personality. Creativity through novelty, subjectivity, self-disclosure. Art as an escape into personality. Creativity through rebellion and irrationality. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll style. Creativity through a persona, using the self as a symbol around which is woven a mythology. Creativity through cultivation of a receptive attitude, which, like the seasons, has periods of barrenness, Fertility. Creativity is a utilitarian process of invention and puzzle solving. A small bit of inspiration, a large bit of perspiration. I'm always trying to let the painting be a little smarter than I am. So I'm always kind of chasing what it means. You should always let the work be a little smarter than you. That's art's only real hope for an afterlife.